It's hard to be here again. It's hard to be here again. To begin a new year and a new decade, once again marking a day of national shame. Years ago today, the first men branded by a pseudo-legal designation as enemy combatants were brought to the U.S. prison at Guantanamo Bay. Thus began the nightmare of illegal detention, torture, and extrajudicial power that has marked January 11th as both a tragic day in the history of our Constitution and a demonic day in the spiritual life and sacred calendar of our nation. The human rights community stands united. <laughs> And for the first time, we have voices for you all to hear of the people that were actually affected by these policies. The people who, due to the hard work of lawyers and advocates and activists, have made their way out of Guantanamo and are trying to piece their life together. And they have a message for us. And the message that they are telling us is that Guantanamo does not end just by presidential policy alone. We have the opportunity to change the way this country is being perceived in the international community. We have the opportunity to hold ourselves and to hold the officials accountable for torture and abuse. And we also have the opportunity to begin to make things right, not only for the men that have been released, but also for the men that remain in Guantanamo. The promise of Guantan Guantanamo's closure is mocked. Uh, by the fact that the only significant change seen by the men at Guantanamo is that the portrait of George W. Bush that hangs there has been replaced with a portrait of Barack Obama. My name is Omar Degayas, and I was uh, locked up in Guantanamo Bay for about six years, and uh, before that in Bagram Base and other, other secret detention in Pakistan. I was mistreated there, physically beaten, sexually abused, and as you can see, I lost the sight in my right eye when I was in detention. But I'm here not to speak about myself, but I want to speak about those people who are still in Guantanamo Bay. I want to be a voice for those voice, voiceless people who are still detained there and facing all the tortures and the beatings that we faced. And uh, I want to say that many of those people were charity workers and many of them were common farmers in Afghani, common farmers. As I can testify, and many people from the CIA who worked there would testify, people from the FBI and even guards who I met and I befriended when they came here and visited us will testify these things. And those people have lost a large amount of their lives precious life from living with their families, their, their, their wife, uh, and their loved ones, like their children. Since the time that was referred to as war on terror, many detention centers, many people were detained outside the laws, uh, mistreated without any scrutiny.
scrutiny and without any transparency, without any facing any justice system of any kind. And that happened in, in here in the UK and in the United States and many other countries. Let me tell you that Binyam Muhammad, who was released after Obama's presidency, has told us that nothing has changed inside those prisons. People are still being tortured, people are still being beaten up physically and harmed psychologically. I would say in particular, I would, uh, we here in London and, and many would hope that the last Londoner who is still locked up in Guantanamo Bay, Shakir Amir, would be released soon to reunite his children, reunite with his children and his wife in this country. The only path to resolving Guantanamo Bay is honesty and transparency and that the American people should hear the truth about what went on in Guantanamo Bay and other many, many secret detention centers which are worse than Guantanamo Bay. Fear and vengeance is not the best motives in making policies and decisions. I think justice and fairness should prevail and, and, and should, should, should be cherished by the American people and by everyone in the world. Exactly seven years, three months, 25 days, I have been in Guantanamo. Plus three months, I have been in, uh, in prison in, uh, in uh, Bosnia. But the uh, United States made no charge against me, nothing. 2007, 2008, when they push the tube in, in my nose, when you say it, oh, it's very hard to me. They said, shut up, you are in Guantanamo, no lawyers. You are terrorists. I don't know who judged, the civilian or the military, who, 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 who the judge? But the problem, the, the, the American people, the most people, they, they can't understand what's happening exactly. When they are uh, the, the, United, uh, the United government arrest me in Bosnia, all people, they say, oh, he's terrorist. But in this day, I was sure of my innocence. I told them if I am terrorist, I will sign to you 50 or 100 years. I don't care. Six months or five months, they tortured me because uh, I was in hunger strikers. In times, uh, in uh, Obama's times, they tortured me more than uh, Bush times. But, but <sighs> I don't know, I, I, I don't know what I will tell you now. They tortured me, believe me, they tortured me. Now when I, I, I wash my hands, I can't, I, I can't fall Guantanamo, because when, when I wash my hands, I, I see the mark of chakras. I can't, I can't. I try, I try, but I can't forget. I can't forget. As I have tried to imagine what it would be like if I was a Guantanamo or Bagram prisoner and experienced the following treatment being held indefinitely for years in some cases eight years without charges and denied legal representation being tortured and abused being held incommunicado and denied contact with family and friends I know that I would certainly want people to demand an end to my mistreatment. Guantanamo should close for many reasons as a matter of national security, as a matter of restoring the U.S.'s respect for uh, the law and human rights, 
but it should also close because of the, the individual men who have lost so much over these years. Um, men like my client who have lost, uh, whose detention has meant eight years of separation from his family, uh, children born that he's never seen, um, a mother who may pass before he's released. And this is just a glimpse um, of, of the human suffering uh, that these men have experienced. You've all heard about why import closing Guantanamo is so important to reestablish our moral credibility, to protect our national security, etc. But if the Obama administration were to go about closing Guantanamo by resettling some of these men into countries where they're likely to be abused, tortured, or face further indefinite detention without charge, it will really be squandering the whole point of closing Guantanamo. There is one group of detainees, there's seven Algerians and a lone Tajik, who have said that they do not want to return to either Algeria or Tajikistan under any circumstances. Um, some of them have said that they would rather be detained for the rest of their lives in Guantanamo or elsewhere in U.S. custody. <laughs> Uh, and the Obama administration has drawn the line at Algeria and, and the Tajik has been cleared for release only to Tajikistan. The government is not actively looking for places to resettle these Algerians or the Tajik. Um, instead, what they've said they would do is rely upon the same methods that the Bush administration used, which is diplomatic assurances. We remain extremely concerned um, that the Obama administration not rely upon diplomatic assurances to return these men. I don't know what to tell him, my client, Jamel, going down in February of 2010 about why he's still in detention. I feel a lot of anger, a lot of disappointment, um, but people like you and this display of support um, is encouraging to me and it's motivating and I want to channel all of the feelings that we have right now into positive energy to educate the public, to educate the public in a way that the administration and President Obama have not about who we are holding in Guantanamo. The sweeping generalizations about dangerous terrorists are unrecognizable to me when I think of the men that I've sat across from, had lunch with, talked with about their families, wept with. Um, this is a president who has the skill and the talent and has shown that he can educate the public about controversial, tough issues. He has not done that, so it's up to us.